to talk about an event that happened quite a while ago. You will see that in the um, clip that I will show you in a short time there, where my where the length of my hair is very different since so was uh, about like a year ago or something. But because I go to a um, Japanese school where obviously only foreigners go to, and it's located in Shibuya, it is a popular place for uh, TV camera crews to do interviews uh, for certain shows when they need some information uh, on opinions from foreigners. So for example, quite coincidentally, uh, today a classmate of mine participated in a show where they um, they showed foreigners three pictures uh, of ja of Japanese, uh, well, uh, of girls, but two of them were actually men, but just dressed as girls because you know uh, Asian guys, you know, are quite um, you no, know, have, have, some of them have uh, very feminine uh, um, characteristics, and some of them are even you know more feminine than some of the girls I know actually in the West. Um, and one of the pictures was actually a girl, and they wanted to see what foreigners would think of the girls, who they like the most, and why. And they do uh, all these different kinds of subjects. I was asked uh, before also by a crew to talk about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, which is a manga, which is pretty popular. Now, I don't know anything about that. I know that there's a game. I think I saw it in a magazine once, like JoJo Bizarre's Adventure Game, but I've never read anything. The style is a bit weird, so I declined that because I didn't want to... I didn't want it to be awkward that they asked me questions and that the only thing I could say is I don't know because, you know, I didn't delve deep into this subject. But what I want to talk to you about today is the interview that I, that I did. Uh, my debut on, uh, on Japanese television. And uh, it was actually funny because it was very short, short notes, but the, uh, the uh, guy who worked at the uh, 1092 hair salon, Buffalo Bob's, he recognized me when I came there, so that was very cool. I guess Japanese TV is not that great, you know, they don't have a lot of channels. I actually don't own a TV. I've been living here now for uh, almost two years without TV, uh, because if I need to watch a drama or something, I can use, you know, the PC for that. Uh, it is a problem, of course, with uh, if I'm in a and I want to see that. So what happened is a classmate of mine um, filmed it off of her TV, and I will also um, post the link to that video uh, in the description below if, for, if you guys want to see the whole video. So I will cut through um, parts of the interview and show you guys, but if you want to see the whole thing, you can also click the link below, and um, you will see that there. So what they wanted to know that day is what foreigners would, uh, were what their favorite Japanese music was, and they ask everything. And when I come on, what's kind of funny is they of course do an introduction and they ask you know why do you study Japanese and stuff like that. And it's not necessarily going to be an interview, but they just want to know because they want to know your motivation. They want to know if there's an interesting story about it. I, of course, have the whole Gyaryo background, and as you, can, as you will see by the uh, length of my hair, it was so long and so heavy that I couldn't, um, like, do it up myself. You know, I had to go to a hair salon to, uh, to, to get it ready, but the hair salons are open from uh, 11 a.m., so, you know, even if I wanted to, I couldn't do it, and then again, it cost like 20 bucks to do it, so to do it for every day for school, uh, will be dumb, so I only, you know, did it if I had a special, uh, date or go out with friends, stuff like that. Um, but anyway, I, in the first part, I say that, um, normally my hair is different, that today I didn't do my hair, um, but normally I look like this, and I show my, uh, ID where my hair is actually, uh, ghetto-like. <laughs> So after that, I uh, show that the um, pants that I'm wearing and the belt, and actually also the jacket, but I didn't say that, um, are bought in 1092. And in the upper right corner, you can see uh, two girls, 
And this is very normal in Japanese television that they have uh, usually famous guests that uh, give commentary or that you see their reaction. Um, people really like that. I mean, you also what's very popular is you know, um, you know those video game channels where people uh, play scary games and they have their web cameo like PewDiePie and I actually also have a channel where I do that. But anyway, people seem to really like to see people's reactions on certain stuff. And um, uh, that is why they always have, it's not always girls, but in this case, uh, I think one of them is a singer. And what's really funny is that one of the girls, this is a long time ago, so I don't really remember, she used to work at 109. So she was actually uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, involved in the whole uh, Gadu world. I wouldn't say that she's necessarily thinks herself a, she herself is a Gadu, but, you know, she, she knows the... Uh, the Yaru lingo, uh, and then they uh, they also asked me, "Do you want to be uh, do you want to be a Gyaru? I'm like, "Yep, I want to be uh, I want to be a Gyaru. Um And they ask, um, "Do you know some some popular words?" And I say that the most common at that time was "age," you know, "age sage," "age poyo." Um, and what was not in the interview is they also asked me about what I thought about Koakuma girls, and they didn't necessarily mean the agejo. That I talked about before, where you know, Koakuma Agejo, but they just talked about the attitude that Gyaru had. So that actually made me realize that maybe, because they called Koakuma Ageha, that Koakuma could actually also be used for other Gyaru subcultures instead of only, you know, Agejo. <laughs> So then they uh, they have some information. They have this for every every um, foreigner they interview. Um, I probably said uh, because you know you usually say your last name first here, um, and also for example you know in official documents right in your passport and stuff your surname is always first. So I said my uh, my my surname first. So that's actually the name that you see there. So it's not Max. It's okay, but. Um, uh, everything was fine. Uh, then underneath that, it said uh, like interesting Gyaru, Gyaru. I'm still 21 there, <laughs> 21, uh, 22 right now. And uh, the lowest thing, I actually don't don't remember what that was. It's a lot of kanji, which uh, I have no idea what it was. A fun thing though that I want to tell still is that I was so worried because of the interview, because I didn't do my hair, and I was like, oh shit, you know, I wish I had all my accessories and my hair done. Uh, I usually don't do it when I go to school and don't have any other plans because um, it takes a long time to prepare for ghetto and ghetto. Um, and uh, it's not necessarily the most comfortable thing to wear. I wear it to feel beautiful or to feel cool, to kind of feel confident. But if I only, you know, go to school and there's, you know, reading text and blah, 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 there's no real reason why to doss yourself out. I mean, famous ghetto and ghetto, famous hosts also don't do that if it's not necessary because, you know, usually, you know, a wider pants or whatever is... Um, more comfortable than the tight jeans. So I'm wearing tight jeans there, but I'm talking in this case, for example, about boots. Uh, you know, I really love the, the way boots look, but um, nothing, in my opinion, to, like beats sneakers to how it feel, uh, how it feels. But in the end, uh, I was very worried. And what happened then is that the television company contacted the school and they came to me and asked if um, it was okay, they wanted my permission to air it. And I was very nervous, but I said okay. And I was actually very happy with the result because I really liked my smile. I was very worried, but I really liked my smile. I thought I, I was afraid that I would look homeless with the long hair. Um, you can actually also see that still that's a lot more blonde than I have now. Um, and uh, I, I was happy with the results and also uh, with how the, everybody reacted. <laughs> Alright, and now comes the 
big uh, climax, and this is kind of embarrassing for me because here's the thing, right? They wanted to know what your favorite Japanese song is. Now, I gotta admit something already, I am not that much into Japanese music. Now, I don't have a lot of experience with it. Um, when I was younger, the only experience that I had with it were certain anime songs. Uh, which which I like, which I which I still sometimes like. I don't really listen to them all that much, but uh, I used to listen to them a lot when I was younger. Um, then came some Visual K, and in terms of Visual K, uh, I'm not an expert. I love Oz, and I love Despair's Ray, and then mostly the old one. And the reason why I didn't want to name them is because uh, I would think that they didn't know what it was, especially like Dispersed Ray, since I don't actually know how to pronounce it Japanese way. I, I was afraid that if I said Dispersed Ray that they were like, what the fuck? Because maybe the uh, the uh, Japanese pronunciation is a little different. And other than that, I don't really listen that much to Japanese music because I don't like it very much. Um, you know, Visual K to me is too soft. Like the music that I listen, usually listen to is trance and techno. So already there, you know, some Japanese music is not uh, integrated. But if I listen to rock or something, I need it to be a little bit more tough. And even like Oz, um, you know, who has some so some hard songs, usually, um, you know, it it, it it gradually becomes softer and softer. And it's the same with with the Spanish Ray. Um, and, I'm, and I'm generally not that much into the, the Visual K scene also, because uh, I think the Visual K scene definitely in fucking Europe is horrible. Horrible. I mean, I, I said some stuff, you know, about that the Gato scene is nasty in Europe, but it's nothing compared to, uh, to the Visual K. And I think the reason why is that Visual K fangirls kinda make Visual K band members their property. Like in, in Gyaru, it is more a thing about feeling beautiful yourself and trying to get to that next level, trying to improve your own style. Whereas in Visual K, it is not only the music. You cannot say that because it is, of course, the whole visual aspect that comes with it. And so many, uh, well, so many, I don't, I don't know that many. I know some Visual K girls and they're okay, but I've met some Visual K girls that are annoying as hell. They're like, Oh yeah, no, I want, I want him to have my babies, and I want to marry him, and blah, blah, And it's this whole sort of nasty fight between each other of, you know, um, Oh yeah, did you did you look at what, what he he looked at me, or I gave him like a present and he really loved it, and or I gave him a rose and he put it in his hair, or whatever dumb shit. It's like, they, they, they fight for attention for this guy, or guys, and... They, the, the whole uh, aspect of affection is intermixed in that whole scene, and I think that makes it extra, extra nasty. So I don't want anything to do with that whole scene. That's, that's gonna, gonna stay the hell away from me. Um, I have, uh, I have, so I have uh, quite, quite a few friends in that scene, and that's fine. Um, I mean, that, it's not annoying. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to the concerts, and I do have to say, it is... It, it, I was invited to some parties where like I was the only one not in that scene and all the others were. And those were some of the most boring, boring parties I've ever witnessed where they were like, Oh yeah, no, did you see him? He looked so feminine or so sexy and all like oh. It's actually the same like with like that I like Gyaru and Gyaru, but I don't talk about it if there's somebody or some people in the group that don't have anything to do with it or don't know anything because I don't want to alienate anyone. Um, what the fuck was I talking about again? Oh yeah, about the song that I, I like. So yeah, alright. So, the uh, choices that I had were, were very few. <laughs> and the choice that I eventually went with was one of the most cliche choices there could have been. But, it turned out to actually work to my advantage. Because what I said was... <laughs> Yeah.
スピードはなかなか早いからなんか嬉しいとそれ聞くと思うとね嬉しい。And so I chose Gucked with Vanilla. I don't actually like that song that much. What I mostly like about it is that they succeeded in actually making Super Saiyan hair. And、um, what I don't usually don't like about Japanese、uh, Japanese songs is that they I don't know how they do I don't know how to explain but they、uh, also men they、uh, go like really. Low voice and and back at, and there there's some girl which I hate and some girls even even do it. There's this、uh, I actually own a fucking CD of her I think because I tried to convince myself that I liked it when I was in the whole you know Japan. Oh my god, I like Japan face. The fuck Kana is her name. She thinks she's like like a half panda or something. She's she's, she's a little weird. And she's like heavy Ichigo. Song, which is just I don't know, she's having a fucking seizure in that that song. But anyway, I chose Gucked and Vanilla because I was convinced that I could explain that without any problems and without stuttering or without looking dumb on the camera. And it's funny because the girl who worked at One of Nine says, if she, when she looks at the clip, ah, that foreigner is indeed a gario because you know, of course, Gucked, you know, big hair. I like that so. Work to my advantage, and、um, after that I say like because it's like the the, the tempo is the, you know high speed. It makes me happy when I'm down or something, or I get more happy and you know get motivated to do some stuff. That's a lie. But anyway, that's how when after that the、uh, interview is over. So yeah, I wanted to share that with you guys. As I said, the whole interview is in the link below.、Um, You cannot actually find it in search. It is unlisted by my friends, so you can only find it with that certain link.、Um, so yeah, that was it for this time, guys, and I will see you guys next time.